That's right, but you don't just have to take my word for it. Try it out for 30 days and love it. Money back. Thanks for your help, Snowman Paul. No problem. I'm a snowman. I was literally built for this. <laughs> everybody, everybody, we're getting ready to get started here. Want to say hi to Bishop Don Adams? What's up? Look, look, he ran down his nose. See him? He trying to be a professional. What's up? Yeah. Three, that is so here and without further delay i just want to introduce our special guest bishop don adams god bless you all on today listen this is a joyful morning that we are here. listen we are here to talk about something that is very important to uh, our standpoint and our faith in our community liberation is very important but most, most, and most important thing is, Bishop Greer, that we got to get our people to understand when are we going to graduate into the realization instead of uh, putting a, a Band-Aid on everything that we do. So now we got to get away from the Band-Aid and start getting into the real thing of life, and that's liberation in the ministry and getting churches to get involved, getting leaders to get involved. The community can be much better, man, if the if the churches would stand and come on and get involved. All right, so y'all listen, y'all heard that here. Y'all heard us, y'all heard us. This gentleman here has been on the front lines of not only the faith movement, but what we call liberation as a true liberation theologist. Okay? That means he's standing in the in the in the shoe print, the fingerprint, and the footprint, okay? Annie, North Carolina, uh, Joliet, Illinois, Samaj Crosby. I mean, this gentleman has been with us, and he's been standing with us through the grace of God, rain, snow, sleet, and shine. So we ain't got to worry about anybody here on this broadcast being on the front lines, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking right. about churches that need to get active. So, Bishop Adams, yeah. let's talk a little bit about 
some of the things that that you've come across when it comes to just churches being involved. And I just want to throw the caveat out there to say, um, you know, this is not an indictment of churches. This is not an indictment of faith leaders. But I'm going to say throughout the whole spectrum of what we're doing up until this point when it comes to contemporary the faith movement, mm-hmm. or we can say the evangelistic movement, which is kind of what it's called now, the evangelistic right. movement, um, we're lacking. Very we, much. We are lacking. What is what is your thoughts about that? Very much. We're lacking because we don't have the understanding what the evangelistic outreach really is. This is because they stand on the corner every now and then or stand in front of the church every now and then and give out some food or give some clothes, and they think that that's okay. But when the person walk away with an issue, and the issue of all the time, it's not about food clothes. The issue sometimes is a mental issue. So what are we going to do to take care of issues? We took care of food. You took care of clothes. But there are mental issues in our community that is uh, having our people uh, destroy uh, our communities, destroy the homes, destroy the lack of knowledge. Listen, the Bible says, that our people perish for the lack of knowledge. And, and, and that's one of the key essence there. we lacking in knowledge. We refuse to get educated. And how can we, uh, uh, how can we bring in a different uh, avenue about things? Or how can we bring in another way of saying, hey, listen, I love... I- Human life cannot last more than five minutes That's right. in those treacherous conditions. That's right. Sub below sub zero Saharan temperatures. We can't, can't life. So why is it that when we know that December's coming and then January and February, why is it that the churches, and I'm not saying all churches, but why do we have a homeless issue? And um, this may be a selfish statement, it may be a, a general benefit. Self. Um, everybody wants to uh, get this. Everybody wants something from somebody to do something. So there's no money to be made, get this now, in housing homeless. There's no money to be made. There's money to be put out, but there's no money to be made. So if they are not putting a buck in their pocket. Now, some of them ain't going to like what I say, but that's okay. Uh, 
because they're not putting a book in their pocket, they're not going to do it. They'd rather build a 5,000 seat cathedral than to build a home shelter or a place that can house the people in their Instead of that, why can't we take, you know, here's the thing about that. There's enough churches in our city, enough leaders that we can all come together and start getting these properties so that we can house these people. That's so Some of these people are very well educated. Some of these people have uh, 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 are inventors. Some of these people are doctors, lawyers, uh, teachers, uh, musicians, uh, cooks. Some of these people have a, 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 a true... Instead, they got to uh, dish off their calling them to come into a, a place of, of, of living. Well, we got to know that sometime uh, we got to stop thinking about self. And that's a big thing there now. We got to stop thinking about self and stop thinking about other people. When are we going to stop thinking about self and start thinking about other people? You know, I was looking on the day and I saw where they are taking these uh, uh, condemned uh, parking lots and turning them into place for shelters for homeless people can go beds and nice things you know even little hubs it's nothing wrong we got enough vacant lots in this that we can house on man that we can house these people so let's talk about and what we want to do is bishop is uh going is a regular contributor to the show and of for this particular show. So what I'm saying is, let's talk about the hub situation because now I've seen, have you seen the state-of-the-art housing that's kind of like a, a little small five by five, five feet by five, or five by 10, sh almost like a closet or a little small upright mm -hmm. shack. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a watch house mm -hmm. that people are able to live in and they're building these houses for communities now. Mm -hmm. And these are You know, here the thing about that is, is that uh, if we are really what we call uh, Christ-like, or we're saying we are true followers of Christ, or, or we're saying we are true believers, then that means that we have to do what Christ did. Isn't that right? Christ uh, helped people. He didn't put you over to the side. Book Live, um, Robert, Tony, Doris, Stanley, everybody who's watching, my cousin, hey, listen, welcome y'all. Let me get y'all input because this is a very serious issue. And we want to talk about it. We're going to drill it down over the course of the next 15 minutes. And I'm, I'm saying, you know, here's the question of the hour. This is the concern. Our church is doing enough in the community for... To
the leadership and some of the problems and the obstacles of leadership. Now, I want to make this clear when it comes to churches and pastors. A lot of times, and, and when it comes to hierarchy, pastors are not under a, any type of authority, so they kind of get to do what they want to do. And you see it in certain churches. This is not an indictment. i got to throw my disclaimer up. But it, the truth has got to be the truth. And let's speak about it for real. you got pastors out here. They, uh, they drive in Mercedes. They wear and, you know, design the shoes, but people in the congregation broke. And if you have a church, 99.5% of the time, then you have a non-for-profit, right? Mm -hmm. So let's break this thing down. And that non-for-profit is giving you tax exempt. So basically, if there's needs, people are tithing, they, they are supposed to be able to come to you and say, Pastor, I need your help. My lights are not being paid. I need some food. And because of your tithing and offering, that's part of what it's about. Then you should, should. We're not saying it happens. It does not happen it does not. majority of the time, but <laughs> you, churches should be able to take care of that congregation and the community abroad that they serve. Am I right or wrong? You, you, excellent. You, you, you are extremely right. You are extremely right. Listen, I, 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 as, as, as Bishop Greer said earlier, uh, I am the vice president of Freedom First. I am the presiding of Bill and God's Kingdom. Uh, International Network and Fellowship. I'm also the president of 70-1 uh, Quartet Reunion of America, and also I'm the pastor of Love of Christ uh, Missionary Baptist Church. But here, here, here again, what we try to do is be an example. We try to be an example not only to just uh, our people that are following with us, but the community, the world, the city. So why be an example of that? Listen, Here's what, here's what happens a lot of times. We get caught up in titles. Hello, lights. Hello, walls. We get caught up in titles, and we get big-headed. Hey, hey, if you want to be a king for a day, we can make you a king for a day. That's right, and that's but what that's, that's all but about. But does that mean that you're doing the quality of work that's necessary to maintain to that maintain kingdom? maintain that kingdom. <laughs> so if you're not working in the kingdom, and I think I, I said this last night to... Uh, my mentor, uh, uh, my mentor, Mr. Right, uh, uh, Bishop right. J.H. Williams, I said that if we relied on our titles, we wouldn't get nowhere. Okay. But if we work, here's what the Bible said. We, uh, we must work while it is day. No man can work when nighttime comes. Okay. So are they really working or are they waiting till nighttime to sleep? Mm. Mm. So let's break, let's break, let's let's talk about some more obstacles because I want to end this thing and we got about 10 minutes. I want to end it with positivity and talk about what we're doing resourcefully, okay? But let's talk about, now about two years ago, we there was a pastor and we're not going to, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, we know you got a private jet. But he was asking his congregation for a private jet, huh, Bishop? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't have one. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> don't, let, <laughs> don't let Bishop Battles fool you. He got the private jet waiting for him right now. Man, I got it's a, a helicopter on top of the building. Is that, it's that, right that Gary International, y'all? <laughs> Listen, no, seriously, oh, there was a, there was a pastor. Asking his congregation God. to buy him a new jet because his old jet was getting old. Yeah. Now he already had a jet. He already had one. But he wanted his new jet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he wanted a new and updated jet. <laughs> it still takes the same fuel the old one took. So what's the difference? You get a new Come one or on. old one. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Bishop. Break it down, man. Break you know, this thing. I, I'm going to try to be as blunt as possible with this. But what sense does that make in you got people sitting inside your congregation that can't eat, that can't pay their bills, that some of them have lost their homes, some of them don't have a job, some of them are hungry, some of them are uh, without anything, and you talking about a new jet? Come on, man. I understand you, you know, you want to go places? But don't go at the expense of your people. Hey, could 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 he have not flown first class on uh uh South, Southwestern or something? Southwestern. You don't even got to fly coach. You can no, fly first class fly for class. the for half the, for half. Uh, a third of the money of a new jet. Well, for they, two years. See, they want to be. <laughs> the biggest thing is, oh, I got to be concentrating while I'm, I'm in.
So when I get to where I'm going, I can go there and speak a dynamic word. If God don't put that word in you, I don't care what you go get up there off that plane and say, you just want to come off a plane and wave like you're the president of the United States. You see the trouble he in, so you're going to get in the same <laughs> trouble he in? Come on, man. Okay, so now you open up a new door. Wait a minute. Let's, oh, let's, man, let's go I'm there. Let's saying. go there. We got, we got 10 minutes. Let's go there. Oh, man. I'm just now, what saying. about, okay, so, you know, we got friends, okay, listening. We have friends. Who speaking of the president? Who endorsed the president? We even had friends who, we you know who we're talking man. about Detroit, okay? Man. Who Trump? He invited Trump down to his church, and Trump did a whole festival down and, in his and church. Said, what kind of business is Come that? On. I what thought is? now I could be wrong. Yes, sir. Now, if I'm wrong, y'all tell me. Uh, uh, those that are listening out there in Radio Land, I thought that the church and the state is separate. Hmm. So how is it that we're getting all these politicians to run up in churches on Sunday and talk about what they're doing, but you, when they come out of the church, you don't see them no more? Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Hold on. What, uh -oh. Was, what was that, a horn sign? You, you got to, you got to, uh, when you're going to get ran, we're going to get hit by the car, no. <laughs> Watch out now. Watch out. Watch out now. Watch me now. So that's, that, that's what's happening to the end of, of the point. And listen, people, please don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love it when people are doing right. But if we got to get back to what is real, we got to get back to our first love. That's it. And, and God is our first love. Amen. And that's what's going to help us get through these situations. Listen, man. I, I mean, you know, you said you want to talk about some positive stuff, man, yeah, and yeah, some stuff that, yeah. listen, we are here to create a, a different adversity with our people. Sure. By yeah. training them. Sure. Getting their mind ready for jobs and home placings and, 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 and being able to function in this world sure. as a true uh, a believer, and not only just a true believer, but somebody that can have a So, you can think you're in a church, right, Bishop? Yeah. And they want to know if their church, if they're being spiritually led the correct way, if they're being spiritually fed. What is one thing that you can tell them or some advisement that we can give them to say, hey, you know, y'all might be in the right place or y'all might be in the wrong place? Uh, it's, it's, it's depending on have you graduated from Sunday school yet? See, here's what I mean by that. Uh, your teaching is correctly from the biblical standpoint, which is the Bible, and not something that somebody wrote.
20 years. Hey, listen, so, if you see a stack of Bibles in the church and they in the corner somewhere with dust on them, with dust on them, <laughs> uh, you might want to know about that, hey, okay? Or Hold you, on. Or you go up in the pulpit and one of the Bibles is holding up one of the chairs because it's crooked and you want the chair to stay. Right, right. Hey, uh, so the, you put a Bible up under the The Bibles become a. Uh, Become shins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 and here's hey. the thing: if there's holes in the roof and the wall of the church, and uh, the pastor got a brand new Mercedes, look, we're not putting everybody down. It's okay. To, pay, it's okay to have hey. swag, yeah, yeah. but there might, be, there, there might be there might be some priorities that's out of place right now. Okay. If you so, so listen. If you if you. <laughs> if the music in your church is the water that's hitting the bottom of the tin bucket. <laughs> Ah, there you go. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> tink, okay. Tink, tink. So, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He, he have, he, look, Bishop Adams having a lot of... And, but you know what, though? Let's keep this real. We got two minutes to close, and this is yeah. the thing. Yeah. This, is a, this was a, a, a brief, but this is a real conversation because here's the thing. Our communities, when we don't have nothing else, we got the churches got to the run. Church and that's historically in the yes, black yes. experience, in the black church, yes, that's yes. where we all from. That's, that's where right. we got our right. We can take it back to slavery to civil rights. So we need our churches to be right. Listen, y'all, hold them accountable. That's right. Myself, Bishop Adams, uh, we got Elder Pusley in the mix who's working with us. We have Freedom First International. We have Building God's Kingdom. Reach out to us. You Reach know, out. we would, we would love out. to extend this conversation to you, your church. Faith leaders who I don't want to see you out there uh, in 20.